I've created a new drummer track and called up a few regions here for a few of the different sections. And these are just the default settings. Now, after we choose a genre and a drummer, we can choose from a collection of drummer-specific presets in the drummer editor. And these presets are specific to Gavin. Now, the presets include not only the patterns that are being played here, but they include the position of this puck, which determines the volume on this axis and the complexity on the horizontal axis. And it also includes the position of these sliders, which are variations on the parts for these specific kit pieces, as well as muting or enabling different drums. And these presets also include the position of the fill complexity knob and the swing complexity knob and these details. So we're going to look at these one at a time. Now, in this video, we're going to focus on acoustic drummers because this interface, although it works the same, looks a little bit different for the electronic and percussion drummers. And we'll look at that separately. So for now, let's look at opening the drum editor. I'm going to close it for a moment. Let me just enable the control bar. We can open or close it with the editor button there when a drummer track is selected. Another thing we can do is simply double click a drummer region and it'll open it. And of course, we can always just use the key command for the editors, which is E to open and close it. Okay, I'm going to hide the control bar again. Now, before we get into the actual parameters in the drummer editor, there's a little bit of general functionality I want to go over. There's an auto select button over here. Now we click this button here to have the display update and always display the drummer region at the current playhead position. Now, for example, here, this region is Grand Avenue. This one is Prospect Park. With this disabled, when I'm playing, now we have Grand Avenue selected. When it crosses over, it's going to remain on this setting. Now, when this is enabled, it's going to update based on whichever drummer region is at the current playhead position. So there you see it switched to Prospect Park. Now, another thing we can do is use this little play button here to audition any changes we're making here in the drummer editor. And remember, these are region specific. So now this one is selected and that's when that'll be played. Now, let's look at the parameters. We can control the complexity. I'll just loop this, and let me just set it to the first one so we can focus on one, and we'll hear what it does. So it's a lot simpler. Now, you'll notice that each time I move this, the data up here updates, and that's to reflect the changes that we've made. So that's relatively simple and loud. It's relatively simple and soft. So it's fun to play with these to get some variations. Now, another thing we can do to generate some subtle variations rather than moving the puck is to refresh the region. And we can do that from under this gear icon menu. We go refresh region. And you'll see the data just changed slightly, and it just refreshed it by generating slight variations based on all these parameters. And it probably influenced the fill at the end. Now, normally these regions have a fill programmed at the end. And not only can you influence those with the fill slider and the complexity slider, but you can refresh the region for different variations. Let's listen to this fill. It'll go at the end here and then loop over to the beginning. Or actually, let's just loop this area here. Go back a bit. Now, if I refresh again, that fill will be altered. Refresh again. Subtle variations. We can also refresh by right-clicking here and going in the Edit menu and go Refresh Region, same thing. And here I just saw it refreshed before the fill. Now, of course, the fill slider will influence the complexity of the fills. Go way up. So we got a longer fill there, or we can keep it really simple. Now, we can also influence the parts complexity based on this. So here, kick and snare, we can get different variations or versions of it. So here's the groove that we have now.
can move it up. So all different variations. Now here we choose which elements are playing and which are muted based on clicking them. So I've just enabled the hi-hat and we now have variations for that that are possible. And of course this will also influence them. And we can enable percussion. Maybe I want to add tambourine there. Maybe instead of hi-hat. And we have variations for those as well. And we can enable tom-toms. So fun to play with these and get interesting variations. And we can also add a swing offset and we can swing based on an eighth note grid or 16th note grid. So let's add some of that in with some hi-hats. Or we can have it based on eighths. Doesn't work that well with this particular groove, but that's how that works. Now we can of course audition different presets and change them as we want. There's a couple of special settings at the end here. When we go to half, it's going to be a halftime groove, and I'll just demonstrate that with the music so you can hear it in context. Now halftime. Or double time. Maybe with some swing there. Now, another one that's special here is the follow checkbox. And what we can have it do is follow the actual rhythm of another track. So let's have it follow the bass line. I'm going to solo the bass and drums for the moment. And let's listen to these two as it is. Now, if I go follow, I can choose which track I want to have it to follow. So let's have it follow the bass. And you'll hear the kick and snare now being influenced by the rhythm of the bass. It's a nice tight groove in this kind of arrangement. Let's solo the Rhodes and bass and drums. And let's have it follow the Rhodes comping pattern. So it's a nice subtle variation. So it's not always necessary to strictly follow the bass. And this works with audio tracks as well. Here's an example with the drummer Jesse using the smash kit and we see the info in the track header. And I've got a regular pattern. Let's listen to this with the bass, drums, and guitar. Works nicely, but I can have it follow the rhythm guitar track the first time you hit play, you may have to analyze the file. It'll be done automatically if it hasn't already been. In this case, it has. But now we'll hear it follow more closely the rhythm guitar. So you hear that nice little anticipation it picked up there. So very nice the way it follows. Let's have it follow the bass and we'll hear how it's different. And now let's enable the synth bass track. So a nice way to get these grooves customized. I'm going to end off here and in the next video we'll look at the details panel and we'll look at how to control the fills a bit more closely.